Welcome to our next little course on demo. This one's going to be a little different. We're not looking at the cheat sheet today. Instead, we're going to be looking at a online version of demo uh, called Katakoda. It's a it's not really demo itself. It's an online environment where you can execute and run a bunch of code. So in Katakoda, we have a lot of different scenarios where you can try out different parts and aspects of demo without having to install it yourself. And also, it's essentially you get a you know, a, a getting started guide or a how to and everything's nice and clickable and very uh, much just shows you the process of doing these certain tasks with demo. So today I'm actually going to be showing how to build, deploy and run a demo application on Fabric. So what we're going to be doing are five different things and it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, number one, we're going to be setting up our demo app. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a project called Create Demo App, which is a project that comes from our getting started guide and is also usable as a base for most uh, user facing applications you would make in demo. Then we're going to be building and creating a local fabric ledger using a demo on fabric project. And what that's going to give us is the ability to, after we install fabric, actually go ahead and have our demo runtime talk to fabric. And then we're going to be deploying our create demo app code that we've compiled to the Fabric Ledger. And so it'll actually go to the demo runtime and the demo runtime will then be able to talk to the Fabric Ledger itself. Then we're going, in step four, we're gonna start up our own JSON endpoint, which basically means we'll uh, get a nice consumable, a consumable by our UI endpoint that can then just go ahead and talk to the demo runtime, which talks to Fabric. Um, but essentially your UI doesn't really need to worry much about the ledger or its underlying state. It can just talk to this JSON endpoint that is generated automatically from your demo code. And then lastly, we'll uh, start up a React UI that'll talk to that JSON API endpoint. And that API endpoint won't really know or care that it's running on demo or fabric. So we're going to start the scenario. Uh, first thing is we're going to create that project. We're going to use the demo assistant in order to do that. Then we're going to go ahead and build our project. Um, and also, this is really for later, but uh, demo, comes, demo assistant comes with a variety of code gen tools. There's one in Java. There's one in Scala, I think. There's one in TypeScript, which is the one we're running right now, uh, that essentially takes your demo code and produces uh, classes you can just interact with more easily than than raw demo code. So we're just going to build that right now. And then once that's done, we'll move on to our next step. OK, now continuing on. Uh, we're getting close to installing Fabric, but the first thing we want to do is install a dependency called SBT. Uh, for this, you could actually use a project called SDK Man, which manages, which is a manager for a variety of SDKs. It does Java, Scala, and everything else really under the sun. And it's just makes uh, your life a lot easier. So now that we've done that, we're going to start installing Fabric. This is actually going to take a few minutes because we have to download a lot of Fabric binaries. Uh, but we want to actually show you know, exactly how long this takes, which when we say it takes 15 to 20 minutes to go ahead and deploy a demo application, we actually do mean that uh, you know, none of this is pre-cached. This is all happening live. And so, of course, you know, while you're waiting for that, if you wanted to know anything else about demo, we have our forum, for example. So here I suggest that you either do a few minutes of meditation or browse the Q&A forum. Uh, just so you can, if you start to get interested in demo, you can familiarize yourself with it a bit more. Uh, and there's quite a lot of questions and answers here. Everybody's really helpful. You know, we have a lot of DA employees who are answering questions, and we also have some non-DA members who are just uh, enthusiastic about demo, both asking and answering questions. And yeah, so here it is still downloading just a little bit. We'll probably fast forward slightly through this, but it takes about five minutes total. All right, and now we have Fabric installed and it's in our path. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually start and run the Fabric network now. 
And so that's going to start there. And while that's going, I'm actually going to hop over to the next step and start SVT. SVT is now going to actually go and download a bunch of things we need also in order to communicate with the Fabric Ledger. Um, as with Fabric and SVT, this is something that you just have to really run once, and then it's going to be fast from then on out. But the first time, you know, we have to install a lot of dependencies. So those will get downloaded. Um, one other nice thing you can check out, you know, while you're waiting for this to complete is the demo cheat sheet, uh, which gives you an overview of quite a lot of demo things. If you've been following the other videos, I actually go through a lot of this cheat sheet. So if you want, you can go check those out as well. But essentially, if you want to, if you're ever coding demo and you need to remember how to do certain common things in demo, it's most likely here in the cheat sheet. And of course, this is available as a project on GitHub. So if there's anything you don't see, you know, you can either make an issue or send a pull request and we'll, we'll love it and really appreciate it. And yeah, so now hopping back over to SVT, it's just going to install some more dependencies. You can also see over here that our Fabric instance is up and running uh, and basically just waiting for transactions now at this point. And so, we actually have two SBT commands here. One is just going to provision our ledger, and then one is going to actually start the demo runtime. So this would be the one that starts the demo runtime that runs against the ledger. And here we're just giving it a little extra addressable memory, uh, which is sometimes needed. But also, um, all these commands can be referenced over here. In in a our demo on fabric repository. And so the readme's here. So if there's anything you don't understand about what each of these things do, or you want to know more about it, you know, you can come and read the demo on fabric readme. And also if you wanted a version of this uh, Katakoda, but essentially to run it locally, we actually have, this is based on the deployment guide, which we have over here, uh, which is essentially 99% the same as Katakoda, except for a couple small Katakoda specific things. But anyway, our ledger has now started up. And as we can see here, um, it's running on port 685. So that's great. So now we're gonna go ahead and actually deploy our DAML application, which is going to deploy to that runtime. And so it's, deployed the uh, it deployed the dart file that we compiled earlier in that demo build step that it allocated some test parties these are the names of the parties that we'll actually be able to use in our UI later to interface with the application every party in demo needs to be created explicitly so uh, we'll be using these parties and now since that's done uh, we're going to go ahead and start our demo JSON API which is going to start running and then now, since that's up, we're going to do our last step, which is actually building our UI. Uh, so this is like building any other React UI. It's just going to, Yarn is going to download all the packages it needs. Then it's going to start a local server, and then we'll be able to, to open it and, and check against it. So this part really isn't even demo. It's just our UI. But we want to show it all. Uh, also, you know, if you're starting to get interested in this stuff. We also have a variety of getting started guides uh, and exercises. These are available in our docs, and they're also going to be available uh, in the interactive version at demo.com slash learn, which is where you can get to all of these lessons. Um, I actually probably should have mentioned that earlier. The one I'm showing you right now is one where I'm still just developing, but it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, so that should be live here soon where you can go ahead and you'll have a box over here where you can build deploy uh, on Fabric. But if you wanted to go run through the Getting Started Guide, you could start that one. If you wanted to learn how to test models with demo, you could go there or upgrade demo applications. Quite a lot of things are here and we're constantly adding to this too. So this page will improve too. It's a little Spartan at the moment, but demo.com slash learn has all these different guides that you can go through. Uh, we also have a sandbox mode in demo. So if you're not aware, uh, you actually don't need to run Fabric or anything to get started with Daml. Uh, you can just use the Daml sandbox, which runs a local SQL server 
uh, for you and automatically just handles everything. So that's really great when you're just developing your application. And then the nice thing about DAML too is you develop in that sandbox and the code that ran in your sandbox runs 100% perfectly on top of Fabric and on top of every other ledger that DAML supports or will support in the future. So that gives you the ability to write your code once and then move it between all these different distributed backends or even regular SQL backends that um, you don't need to worry about the underlying ledger really that much, except for the when you want certain properties of the ledger. But your code and your business logic itself really doesn't have to change. So now our UI is up. So we can actually go ahead and open the UI. And here it is in all its glory, our create demo app. And like I said before, we can log in as Alice, Bob, or Charlie. So here I'm going to log in as Alice. And what we're going to see here is, OK, I'm Alice, and you know what? I want to go ahead and follow Bob. Uh, we can then hop over to one of these terminals over here. We can actually see that we're successfully writing to our ledger. So essentially what happens here is the UI went and made JSON API queries that talk to the demo runtime that then went and committed uh, to the Fabric ledger. And so you can see that all of these things just happened very quickly and without having to worry about any of that. And then, you know, if we were to go ahead and log in as Bob, we can go ahead and see that, oh, look, um, Alice is following us. Okay, we'll go ahead and follow her back. Uh, but the interesting thing here, too, is that because DAML is very much uh, about making sure that everybody interacting with the ledger has permissions to see the parts of data that they are allowed to see, Charlie, for example, can't see that Alice and Bob are uh, following each other on this network unless Alice and Bob explicitly allow Charlie to see this. And it's, it's, it's designed in such a way that um, if Alice and Bob are following each other or entered into a contract where they um, are both parties to the contract that have to agree to the contract, both of them need to uh, approve it in order for Charlie to see. I'm not exactly 100% sure how this uh, contract is structured on the back end, but just in general, uh, DAML provides this great level of privacy um, when it comes to interactions between different entities on the ledger. And it tries to do this irrespective of the ledger it's running on. But some, some of those things do depend on the ledger it's running on. And I'm probably getting a little off topic here. But it's just worth noting that DAML really tries to handle a lot of this for you and make sure that whenever you're doing anything on DAML, that you're doing it explicitly rather than implicitly. And yeah, so that's basically our application, you know, and if Bob, Charlie wanted to go ahead and follow Bob, Charlie could go ahead and do that. And that's another transaction broadcasted and saved on the network. And yeah, thank you very much for checking out uh, this little run through of demo on Katakoda or well, demo on Fabric. And yeah, go ahead and check out this interface. You know, like I said, it's at demo.com slash learn. Um, this one is not up there yet because I was just developing it, but it will be up there very shortly. And yeah, thank you.